person that uh, is important to our history but doesn't get spoken about. It's, his name is Benjamin Banneker, and he was a self-taught, free uh, person of African origin who happened to be a mathematician, an almanac author, an astronomer, and a farmer. Now, for those who may not know what almanacs are, that's what people use to measure uh, when to grow crops, things like that, you know, like sunlight, sunrise, what what's the moon going to be? That's what an almanac was. And he was a farmer, which kind of goes hand in hand. At the age of 15, he took over the family farm and created an irrigation system to control the flow of water to the crops. Now, if you know anything from my 33 dynasties of Egypt, you will know that these people in Egypt 5,000 years ago also created irrigation systems. That's why Egypt was so bountiful with food, because the water was plentiful. They created tributaries, and they cre created irrigation systems to control the flow of water to the crops. Now, I pointed that out to point out the fact that this must be something people that look like me just know how to do, I guess. Anyway, in the 1750s, he, inverted, he, inverted, uh, he invented the first clock in America. It was this dis invention that put his talents on display for the country. He's responsible for surveying of the territory for construction of the nation's capital in 1791 after the lead architect quit. Also, commercially successful series of almanacs. And he corresponded with Thomas Jefferson, who we all know loved him some. <laughs> he loved women of African origin. He corresponded with Thomas Jefferson, the drafter of the United States Declaration of Independence, on the topics of slavery and racial equality. And we all know that the history books have documented that Thomas Jefferson loved racial equality, or he just liked splicing his organs into women of African origin. Anyway, that was Benjamin Banneker, for those who did not know. The next guy I want to talk about is a guy who was a Kenyan politician. His name was Jomo Kenyatta. He was Kenyan-born. He, he became Kenyan's first president and considered the founding father of the Kenyan nation. He led Kenyan African National Union or KANU delegation to the first and second Lancaster Conference in London where Kenya's independence constitution was negotiated in 1960 and 62. These, these people basically had to go to London to negotiate their freedom in their own country. It seems like that that's just something that I guess oppressed people just innately do. You know, they, they have to buck the system or buck the trends or, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're always fighting up twice as hard half the credit. We're always fighting up, you know. I I, I fight the stereotype of us being lazy. I fight that every day. I, I saw an interesting picture that brought that up. I saw a picture that said that, uh, and I hate to use the word, but I'm going to use it. It's almost like this is a curse word. I mean, uh, black people have been stereotyped as lazy ever since we stopped working for free. Anyway. I'm back to Jomo. He supported reconciliation and consistently asked white settlers not to leave Kenya. His policy was that of continu continuity and gradual Africanization of the government, keeping many old colonial civil servants in their old jobs as gradually replaced by Kenyans. He also oversaw peaceful land and reform processes, Kenyans' admission into the United Nations, and established institutions in the, of independent Kenya. That was Jomo Kenyatta. He was born in 1891, and he died in 1978. The third guy I want to talk about is Medgar Evans. And some of you may already be familiar with this American civil rights activist from Mississippi. He worked to overturn segregation at the University of Mississippi and enact social justice and voting rights. He was secretary for the now what we know as the NAACP. Worked on voting rights and registration, economic opportunity, access to public facilities, and other changes within segregated society. He was murdered by Brian De La Beckwith, a member of the Ku Klux Klan. His murder result and resulting trial inspired civil rights protests as well as numerous works of art, film, and music. That was Medgar Evans. It always seems like we're fighting for a cause or trying to champion a cause that leads to our freedom. But, you know, that's what we do. 